What's up you guys? Welcome back to another video. In this one we are talking all about manifesting and the manifesting mistakes that I've made in the past. So let's get to it. So first of all, I just want to say thank you, thank you, thank you to all the new faces around here. Um, I've gotten a lot of new subscribers recently and I'm so, so grateful for you guys and happy that you decided to join me along on this journey. If you are watching this and you haven't yet subscribed, make sure you hit the subscribe button and the notification bell down below and let's jump into this video. Okay, so with manifesting, a lot of the videos that you see out there are videos on how it works and, you know, encouragement or different things to try. Um, if you do want me to make videos on that or what has worked in my life in the past or right now, let me know and I'd love to make a video on that later. Um, but a, I did describe a little bit of my recent manifesting routine in my morning routine video that I just did a couple of weeks ago, so feel free to check that out if you want to know a little bit about what I'm doing. But there isn't that much out there on, you know, what people have tried that hasn't really worked out and that's kind of what, what I wanted to talk to you about today. So in my experience of manifesting, I've tried a lot of different things and I only just watched The Secret recently, so all the information that I had about manifesting was pretty much from, you know, different YouTube videos or just hearing people talk about their experience and what they've tried. Um, so I you know, have learned so much more since watching The Secret and kind of getting to the source of what all this information is kind of coming from. And so here are some of the mistakes that I have made. So the first mistake that I made is that I didn't know what I wanted, right? And I use that to stop myself. So when I was starting out learning about manifesting or starting out in kind of my journey of practicing these different things and even just personal growth in general, I was really young, like I was maybe 22, 23. So obviously I just graduated college and I was trying to figure out what I wanted to do with my life. And um, there were so many unknowns and I don't think that even if we have an idea of what we want in our early 20s, it still ends up changing a lot and as life goes on, you know, we obviously evolve and experience a lot more and kind of figure out what we want along the way. So while I was that young, you know, I was just like, I don't know what I want, like I want to travel and I want to do this and I hadn't even really started my YouTube channel or thought about my business yet and so I just kind of felt overwhelmed and I was like, I don't know how to like narrow everything down and make it specific and I use that to stop myself. So I would say that if you are struggling with this problem and you don't know what you want your life to look like overall, but you still want to try manifesting, pick one thing in your life that you know that you want. So for me, especially recently, I really want to take um, my self-worth coaching to be my full-time job. I want to keep content creating and I want all of this to support me so that I can use my time to do it full time. And that's been like a huge goal of mine recently and I haven't been able to completely do that yet, but that's really what I've been manifesting. So, you know, there are still some unknowns in my life, like, you know, when I want to get married or where I want to live and that's okay. It's okay to kind of be unsure of different things, but if you have one thing that you know that you want, just by knowing that and working towards that and manifesting that, you'll be able to attract it in your life. And that's really the most important thing. So it's okay to not want to not understand, you know, how everything is going to fall into place or how everything in your life is going to work with each other. As long as you know one thing that you want, that's all you need. So the second thing has to do more with visualizing specifically. And when I would visualize, you know, myself working in my business or, you know, all these great goals that I wanted to do or even things like writing a book, I like... I, I would visualize myself being in a different place, right? So I would visualize myself for a while like traveling in Thailand and being location independent and working from an Airbnb. Other times I would picture myself like in a city with like this gorgeous apartment and all this like modern mid-century furniture and like having all of that as kind of my office and where I would do things. and. It's totally okay to manifest those things or even to manifest them separately. It's good to know, you know, if you do want to travel or where you want to live or whatever, like all those things are things that you can manifest and visualize. But for me, what I realized is that by doing that, I kind of kept pushing off 
when I would be able to go full time into the future, right? Like I wasn't looking at my present day reality and saying, this is where I'm gonna wake up, this is where I live now, and I'm gonna be able to do this. I would I would kind of push it into like one day when I live in this great apartment, that's when I'm gonna be able to do this full time. And so I was kind of pushing it off and not making it accessible to my life right now. And again, with visualizing and with manifesting, it doesn't really read your mind. So the way that you think about things and the way that you, you know, talk about things and visualize them, all of that is what it's going to bring to you. So if I keep saying, oh yeah, in the future I'm going to work this way, or in the future this is where I'm going to make my money, or this is what I'm going to do, it says, okay, yeah, you'll do that in the future, and it doesn't really bring that into your present. So now instead of focusing on like this glamorous, beautiful apartment, which I someday do hope to live in, I... I'm focusing on what would my life look like if I was doing this now. I would be waking up in my bedroom now, I would be working in my office now, but I would be able to work for myself full time. And so that's a way that I'm kind of drawing it closer and now I've started visualizing me doing those things in my exact space so that I'm not pushing it off and I'm drawing it as close to my present as I possibly can. My third tip is thinking that just having one single negative thought is going to push away all of my manifesting, right? And that having one negative thought about what I want to attract or feeling like a bit of doubt is going to make it not happen for me at all. And I was actually watching a video um, by a channel called Illuminating Joy, and I can link her video in the description below or just her channel, but she does a lot of videos on manifesting and I actually just found her like a week ago. But she was talking about this exact topic and she was like, what if you had the thought that even if you had negative thoughts, what you're manifesting would still happen? And I think that kind of ties into what I talk about on my channel a lot with like managing emotions and things like that. Just because you have one moment that's like a slip up or you have one negative thought doesn't mean that you aren't still capable of managing your emotions and being, you know, an emotionally responsible person, right? So she kind of took that idea and talked about it with manifesting and I that really like honestly kind of blew my mind in the moment because it's easy to be so hard on yourself and especially when you have perfectionist tendencies, you can really like just get down on yourself for making one single mistake one time even though you are on this like upward trajectory of doing things that you wouldn't have even thought of doing a couple of months ago. You know what I mean? Like we really harp on those little negative things and kind of look over all the positive things that are going on in our lives. So when I think about doing that with manifesting, I would be so hard on myself for, you know, doubting that or like not feeling fully alive when I think about what I'm manifesting or visualizing. And when she said, think about it in the way that even if you have a negative thought, it could still happen. And that idea itself has helped me just kind of let, like observe the negative thoughts that I have and let them slip away, but still continue manifesting and still continue visualizing. Okay, and then the third thing, or the fourth, the fourth thing? I can't remember. But the next tip is that one of the mistakes I made is I constantly would manifest really big things, or I would want really things, really big things to happen for me. And I think that because I didn't see them immediately, I kind of try, I kind of ended up doubting the powers of manifestation. But when I started, manifesting small things along with the bigger things, it seriously changed my perspective on it. So when I would start manifesting little things like getting a parking spot right in the front, like obviously before quarantine and everything happened, but you know, when I was going out more, even a couple of years ago, I would try and manifest little things like um, parking spots. And one Christmas I manifested having a tree. I was like, no matter what, our apartment is gonna be decked out this year. And I didn't really want to spend the money on one, um, especially because I did live in an apartment and we would have been moving a lot. And, you know, because of that, there was no point in buying like a gigantic tree, um, especially just with storage and just all of that didn't really make sense. But that exact year, someone gave us a Christmas tree to put up in our home. And so we ended up, you know, obviously returning it back, but that holiday was beautiful. Yeah, I just, um, that was something smaller that, you know, within a matter of months just kind of showed up and I didn't even have to do anything for it. And so I think if you're struggling with manifesting, that's a good thing for you to try. Just try really small things. And actually on that same channel, Illuminating Joy, she talked about manifesting rainbows. And I was like, oh, that's cool. Like maybe I should do it. And I live in a desert where it doesn't really 
rain. Um, and actually, funny enough, it rained today, but yesterday I was watching a TV show and it was um, about like fixing restaurants. I think it's called like Restaurants on the Edge um, on Netflix. So I was watching that and they did an episode in Hawaii and this guy was literally about to cry talking about how much he loved the land and how much he loved his family and this family farm that he lived on. And there was a gorgeous rainbow and he was like, I see this rainbow every day and I just get so happy and I thank God. And I like looked up from whatever I was doing and I was like, oh my God, there it is, like a rainbow and someone talking about the power and magic of it. So. I think for me, my mistake was that, you know, I have always seen myself as like a logical person and even though I've seen myself as creative as well, I always have been like told that I'm smart and kind of felt like that was a big part of my identity. So when I, you know, got into like manifestation and all this stuff that was more like woo woo, I was honestly scared. I was like, this isn't me, this isn't like my identity, like I'm going crazy or I'm like not gonna be considered a smart person anymore. And all of these thoughts really came up and you know, it was hard for me to like trust in the unknown because so much of my identity and my logical side was about like seeing what's exactly in front of you and being really realistic and being like pragmatic and not really looking for things in the future, not really hoping because that could mean that you have false hope or that you're promoting false hope. And these were all things that I was really, really against. And I'm still against the idea of like false hope, but um, yeah, I just like, that's how I saw myself. And so when I was trying to manifest these big things, I just kind of would tell myself that I'm crazy or that I'm not, I don't really know what I'm doing. And with the smaller things, like seeing that proof kind of bridged the gap in me feeling like I was going from just being really illogical and kind of crazy to actually seeing that there was some proof and some evidence of this. We have our identity in all these different areas of our life and so sometimes manifesting or thinking positive thoughts can kind of be contrary to what we've built our identity upon for so long especially if you're the kind of person that's into like self-deprecating humor and things like that and that's how you relate to people but it can be done you just have to you know decide that that's what you want to do and be willing to take that leap of faith and for me that was the, really the hardest part but Again, this was a few years ago and now I'm completely on the other side of that where it's so much easier for me to take a leap of faith. Faith, I've done that with money, I've done that with, you know, courses, I've done that with coaches and working with people. So, it really has kind of become second nature for me to do that and now that's more of how I see my identity. So, um yeah, if that's you, just try manifesting like these smaller little things and you really will see like some proof of it. So actually, if you try this, let me know in the comments below. Let me know if you've tried manifesting anything or come back in a couple of days if you actually saw that it worked and let me know because I would be super, super interested to hear your stories about that. So before I go, I actually have some super exciting news. I have recently launched 60 minute intensives that is basically a one-on-one -on -one 60 minute session with me where we deep dive into a current problem that you are facing and we just work through it. So whether it's identifying your limiting beliefs and mental blocks or just getting to the bottom of what your thoughts are kind of circling around or unpacking how you've been feeling, even if it's dealing with procrastination or dealing with self-doubt or you know dealing with low self-worth, or even if it's a more specific problem, like you have a dream or an opportunity in front of you and you're nervous about taking it or you're not sure what the right decision is, anything along those lines, if you have any sort of specific problem, that is something that will work for us to just kind of dive into your thoughts and figure out what is really going on and help you kind of have an easier time making that decision or an easier time making that leap of faith like I talked about in this video. So if you are interested, they are $99. It's a one-time payment or you can do two payments payments of $49.99 and I will leave all the details across the bottom of the screen here and in the description below. And right under the sign up, I do have a calendar so you can pick the best day and time for you. I'm also available on the weekends and on the weeknights. So I've already denoted when I am available on that calendar and then you can just book a spot for yourself. I do have a secure way to pay on my website. It actually gets run through PayPal, so it's completely safe. And you can use any major credit card or just your PayPal account as well. So if you are interested, like I said, I will leave all of the details down below in the description or you can visit this link on the screen right now to sign up. I really hope that I can see some of you there. I would love to meet you and talk to you one-on-one. -on -one. And if you do want to connect with me in another form, but you are not sure if you want to purchase coaching yet, no problem at all. I will leave my Instagram and all other 
ways to connect with me down in the description as well and I'll leave a link to my free weekly newsletter so this is like advice that or a story about myself or something that I'm going through and I don't put that on any other social media so it's not on YouTube it's not in my podcast and I don't post this advice on my Instagram either it's completely exclusive and of course it is a free email newsletter I keep you updated there just once a week every single Thursday. So if you do want to join, of course that link will also be in the description. Thank you all so, so, so much for watching. And again, hello and thank you to all the new faces out there. I really appreciate you being here. I love you all and as always, happy healing.